SwiftUI makes it really easy to create custom UI components because they're effectively just regular views that expose some kind of binding property for us to read elsewhere. To demonstrate this, we're gonna build a star rating component that lets users rate things between one and five by tapping images. Now we could just make this view simple enough to work with our current use case, but it's often better to add some extra flexibility where appropriate so it can be used elsewhere too. In this case, that means we wanna add a whole bunch of customized properties. Here, we'll say, what label do you want to appear before a star rating? Will the default value be an empty string, i.e. no label? We'll have a maximum integer value with a default value of five, so you can have five stars, but maybe 10 stars in the future. We'll have often on images that will take whether we're using a star or something else, if they're highlighted or not highlighted, which one to use. Um, for defaults here, we'll actually have nil for the off image and a filled star for the on image. And when we find nil, We'll actually use the on image for the off image as well. So if you have around below, have like a bunch of stars, uh, that some are on, some are off, doesn't matter, they're all stars by default, which is a nice, easy solution. And finally, we'll have off and on colors. So if a star is highlighted, it'll be yellow by default. Uh, if it's not, it'll be gray by default. But it's customizable, so users can change it if they want to. Anyway, above and beyond all those nice display options, we also have to have a binding here to an integer made elsewhere so you can change when they press the star ratings, change an external value somehow based on what they pressed. So make a new SwiftUI view. Call this thing rating view. And start out with these properties. We'll say we want a binding called rating as an integer. Then a label string, empty by default. And a maximum rating, integer a five by default. Then an off image, optional image, and on image will be image system name star dot fill. And then var off color is color dot gray and on color is color dot yellow. All customizable but with sensible defaults to get this working easily. Now before we're gonna fill in this body property here, Obviously, if you try building the code, it'll hit an error straight away. The hash preview code no longer works. There's no binding being passed in for the rating. Uh, SwiftUI has a very simple and specific solution for passing in bindings in previews called constant bindings. The bindings with fixed values, uh, on one hand, it means you can't change them easily, but it also means you can create them trivially. It's perfect for previews. And so down here, I'll say we're gonna pass in a rating with a constant binding value of so four out of five by default. I'll go now build, boom. Okay, back to this body property here. This is gonna be a H stack containing any label that's provided, if there is one, plus as many stars that were provided. Although of course they can choose any image they want to, it could be a circle or a star or who knows what, doesn't matter. The logic for choosing which image to show is actually fairly easy, but it's perfect for carving off into its own method to reduce the complexity of our code. The logic is this. If the number that was passed in as our current rating right now is greater than the current rating, so if we're on star number four, our rating is three, boom, we've gone beyond the star rating, return the off image if it was set. Otherwise, return the on image. Then, if the number that was passed in is equal or less than the current rating, return the on image. So, down here, I'm gonna say func image for number int, Ooh, like that, returns an image. So if our number is greater than our rating, return either oops, our off image or our on image. Otherwise, send back our on image, like that. So we wanna use, if we can, the off image. If it isn't one, you say as on image. But if we are at least that rating, then send back the on image like that. And now actually implementing the body property is a surprise and easy because if the label has any text in it, we can just go ahead and uh, display it and then loop from one to our maximum rating plus one and call our image for property again, 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 that method again, again. We'll also add a foreground color based on the uh, rating we have right now and add uh, a button around it so all interacts correctly. So 
your body property here, scrap that. And we'll say there is a H stack. And if our label is empty, is false, we have text inside there, add the label. And now after that, we'll do a for each, counting from one up to maximum rating plus one with an ID of self. Give you a number coming in, make a button. When it's pressed, make rating equal to that number. And the label here will be the image for that current number. So one, two, three, four, five in our default case with a foreground style. And here, if a number is greater than our rating, use off color. Otherwise you use on color, like so. Boom. So you can see we have four yellow stars, one gray star, which makes sense for our default preview of uh, four. If it was one, we'd get one star, five, five stars. It's working very nicely. That completes our little rating control here. So we can put it into action straight away. Go ahead and return to add book view. And already have this picker right now with this rating inside. And it's okay, you can choose rating three, whatever here, fine. Um, it's much more fun to just remove all that and say there's a rating view with rating attached to dollar rating like that. And now we get our star rating component right there. So our default values look great out of the box. I'm just literally attaching our local rating integer to the binding inside that star view. Everything else, the colors, the stars, and so forth, they all come out of the box. Please try it out. Please, please try it out. Press Command R now, build and run your code, because it very likely this will not work the way you hoped. Let's press plus now. And I'll just ignore the rest and press plus two here. I'm pressing two stars, and it jumps to five straight away. But you know, one, two, three, four, do nothing at all, only five, does anything here. Um, <laughs> I have seen this problem hit so many people, literally countless hundreds of people in various SwiftUI workshops at all skill levels. No matter how much experience they have, hit the same problem. And what's happening here is so subtle. This is a form right now. And when SwiftUI has these rows inside a form, it likes to assume the rows themselves are tappable, right? Which is a good thing sometimes. This is sometimes a very good thing. When I'm adding things here, this whole save button here, the whole row can be tapped, right? And so it means a good thing for users. They can literally tap anywhere. When I tap the word save, they can tap anywhere in that row to select that button, which is cool. But in this case, we have multiple buttons inside this list. And so SwiftUI is getting confused. It basically taps them all in order. So if we were to go through and uh, in our rating view, just, just like print out here, print tapped uh, number, okay? Uh, just so we know what it's doing, you'll see it taps all of them in order. So I press plus, press five, boom, tapped one, two, three, four, five. And that's why it selects the five at the end. It's, it's going through one, then two, then three, then four, and ending on five every time, which is why it's getting confused. Um, we can disable the whole, the whole rows tappable thing easily. It's an extra model attached to this H stack here. We just say button style is uh, plain. Boom. That makes SwiftUI treat each button individually inside the row. So here I can say four or one or five smoothly and it works correctly. And the result's so much nicer to use. It's just a one tap now to choose a star rating versus the menu that pops up with other options inside there. And just generally, I think star ratings are very uh, common, expressive way of expressing how much you like something, the five star book or whatever. Uh, and I don't, you know, if you're sitting here thinking, oh God, how would I possibly have known that? You wouldn't, you really wouldn't. I, again, I've seen folks of all levels of experience up to very, very senior, you know, 15 years of iOS work behind them, whatever, lots and lots of skill who don't know that. I'd be helped along to find it. It's normal to not know things. It's normal to learn things, and now you know it. So pass on the knowledge of fire.